Well, if you're not sick of me yet, Cabalist, we are getting into the teens, so you only have to put up with me for two more episodes. So get ready, see what's going. The mind. All right, folks, well, first off, don't ask me why there's a bunny on the front of this. It doesn't make any sense to me. Bunny with shurikens, but the mind by itself is a fantastic game. It's so, the concept is so cool. I was introduced to this at a uh, work meeting. Jeffrey Engelstein broke it out and said, all right, we're going to have a team building thing going on. And when I heard the concept of you have to play these cards in order from like one to a hundred, but you can't talk and you can't like use your hands to show what numbers you have. You just have to kind of read other people. And I played one round. I was like, this game is impossible. But what's really cool is when you play with the same people over and over again, and it's like magic. You just start to be able to read them. It is so much fun. And it's so rewarding when you actually win. I think I've only won once and I played it. I don't know how many times. Great, cool party game. And it's a it's a filler. It only takes a couple minutes to play. Wonderful, wonderful game. Just one. All right, well, coming in at 19 is another party game. And I remember distinctly watching people play this game and thinking, this is the dumbest game ever. Like, it's just stupid. Just one. You, like, everybody's got to write down a word that's a clue and then turn it around and, gee, like, two people have the same one. It's got to go away. What was amazing was when I started playing it and you're sitting around the table and you're trying to come up with a clue that's not too obvious because you don't want to have it go away, but you want it to be something the person can get. And I love when we're playing this at a big party and everybody turns her thing and the person guessing just is stumped. And everybody at the table is like, what the hell? Why can't you do it? We're calling people over saying, hey, get over here. Can you figure this out? And they'll figure it out in one second. And we're like, oh my gosh, you're so stupid. Oh, it's, it's so much fun. Just One is great. Great. And I think... Pretty much anybody could play it. Cerebria, the inside world. Well, you all know I am a huge, huge fan of Mind Clash, and you're going to see pretty much every game they've done on here with just a couple minor exceptions. So this is a game I got because I thought it looked cool and it was Mind Clash, and I trust that they're going to put out great games. I saw it at a convention once, and I love the artwork. I love the concept, the theme that you're... Basically, it's inside out the game where you're playing these factions of good or bad or neutral emotions and trying to control this person. You're building this person's personality. Well, I'll tell you what, Jamie is really good at playing Gloom. So every time I play with him, we're essentially building a psychopath. But still, it is so much fun. It's I mean, it's hard as hell to explain. It can take quite a while there can be time between turns, so you got to figure out what to do. Uh, but it is extremely challenging to do well. There's a lot of puzzling going on in this game. Just really neat, and the artwork is beautiful. Festival of Thousand Cats. All right, well, I'm a junkie for artwork, and I will tell you the reason I got this game was primarily because it's adorable looking the artwork is so cool with all these cats just having a party and getting drunk and hanging out in saunas it it was just I, it drew me in and then i played it and i got i got to play i was introduced to this at dice tower con and i was just looking for a game they needed another person i was like sure i'll play whatever oh my god i fell in love with this game the 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 way the card mechanics work the fact that it's, it's just a basic trick taking game but there are different odds based on the different suits there's a lot of strategy that goes into this game. It's very, it, there's a lot of deep strategy. And I love introducing this game to people. Uh, in fact, I was very proud to introduce it to Tony. And I, I, to my surprise, he really liked the game. Beautiful game, a little harder to find, but I'll tell you what, I love it. Festival of Thousand Cats is my favorite trick-taking game there is. Lestia. Well, all right, folks, I love Push Your Luck games. And this game, for me, is one of my favorites. It is one that you can break out as a filler game at a party, and there's lots of cool Push Your Luck uh, going on. But the fact that you 
kind of have to push your luck with the other players. So in Celestia, you're this uh, crew on an airship that's moving down these different islands. and You're trying to pick up treasure, but there's all these obstacles you have to come across and you have to roll these dice and succeed against it. But there's always one captain and all the other players are trying to decide, well, do do we abandon ship now? Because this captain is never going to beat the next challenges or do we push our luck and hopefully get a better treasure? Lots of cool mechanics there with, with some powers you can use. I, I just think it's a great filler game that has a, a really cool uh, actual uh, airship that you put your guys in. Neat game. Last Will. But essentially, you're trying to, you've got all of this money, you're trying to get rid of it. You want to be broke by the end of the game. And whoever's the brokest wins. It's great because you're basically buying junk property and making it depreciate. You're losing your job. You're going on really expensive dates. You're hiring really expensive helpers. And when you get into the storytelling, you start going into, okay, well, why am I bringing a horse and my chef and my dog on this date that I'm going on? Well, the answer is because I had to pay them all and I had to spend money. So it cost me more. It is so neat. I just have a ton of fun playing this game. I love the expansion because it integrates uh, a job aspect to the game. Really, it's just it's just a fun game. It's nonsense. It's yeah, it's a great game. Carry on Legends of Illusion. Well, this game used to be in my top five, but again, it's fallen prey to the same thing Euphoria did. I feel like I played to carry on out. I love the concept of being illusionists and magicians and you're going out and trying to do the best shows and you're getting your goods and you're practicing tricks and hiring workers that are going to help you out in different ways. Lots of stuff to explore, but I've played it so much that I feel like I've explored everything. And I think this, like Euphoria, will come back into my top 10 because I'm getting the expansion. And everything in the expansion is what I want, where you can actually train your apprentices in certain areas. You're basically making your existing shows better. I cannot wait because I miss Tricarion. I It's a game I miss. Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. Oh, all right. Well, when it comes to Lovecraft games, they are extremely, extremely hit and miss. And when I heard that Arkham Third Edition was coming out, I was like, you know, Second Edition was such a letdown. It was it's actually just a really bad game. Uh, and I looked at the board for Third Edition. I was like, oh, I don't really like it. It doesn't seem like it. everything fits together. But then I just said, you know what? I'm going to get it. I'm going to try it because I remembered Mansions of Madness second edition and I'm starting to trust that Fantasy Flight is going to do a better job eventually. Uh, and I was not disappointed. Arkham third edition, the way I explained it was it took all the, the good things about every other Arkham series game and put it in here and then got rid of all the stuff that made second edition bad. Really fun. And the storytelling is so good. It's so in depth now. I love it. Blank in space. Well, guys, I've always loved Clank. It was just, it's a fun deck building game with a, an aspect of push your luck and stress going on because you got to get down in the dungeon, and then you got to get your artifacts, and then you got to get out before you die. And if you die too soon, you just lose. You outright lose. Uh, but there's a safe zone where you can die and you just won't get the points for leaving. I always felt like it wasn't stressful enough. Then Clank and Space came along. And wow, this is the Clank game I wanted. Now I just want them, and I've heard this is with the expansions, that I want them to take all the stuff from Clank and Space and put it in Clank. Because I like the theme of Clank better. But Clank and Space, the safe zone is much smaller. There's a lot more pressure to get in and get out. You have to do certain things before you can unlock the areas that have the the really powerful artifacts. Uh, there's like different spaces where the exit zones are. So you might be racing one of your opponents to get to that one lifeboat before they do. Oh, it was it, it was it was a blast. I couldn't believe it. I was so happy. It was like they made this game. Um, they made a great game. 
a million times better. Like in space, really fantastic. Thunderstone Quest. Well, back when we first started the show, we talked about Thunderstone. And I was first excited because I like Dominion was neat, but the theme was so dry. And then Thunderstone came out and wow, it's got a really cool theme, but I still felt the gameplay was lacking. So I just ignored Thunderstone for a while. And then we got Thunderstone Quest. This is very cool. I love the fact that you're essentially dungeon delving. You have your village where you go and you gear up and you do stuff. And then you go into the dungeon and you crawl down and you kill monsters and you get treasures. And the fact that there are unique super treasures, essentially like relics that can do all kinds of stuff. You could become a, a werewolf, a vampire. You could get an amazing sword that you have to kill things or else it kills you. Just so many different possibilities in this game. It's very, very challenging because you have so many different classes you can play with so many different sets of items and differences and items and the quest could be really restrictive or really cool i love playing this game and i tell you if you like people that like deck builders you should get them to play this because i think most people would really like it well all right Kabbalist, that is the teens come in tomorrow we're gonna get to the top 10 best games of all time as you know, my list has that. I'll see you then. Thanks so much, everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please do us a giant favor by subscribing to the channel and clicking that wacky bell icon. If you're into board games, miniatures games, role-playing games, we have a bunch of audio podcasts you might enjoy. You can find those at thesecretcabal.com or on iTunes and Stitcher.